Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Hello and welcome. I'm John, priest at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Camillus, New York, and this is For All the Saints, our weekly celebration honoring the lives of the holy women and holy men honored by the Episcopal Church. This week, this week we remember Jonathan Daniels, martyr and seminarian and civil rights activist. Let us pray. O God of justice and compassion, who didst put down the proud and the mighty from their place, and dost lift up the poor and the afflicted, we give thee thanks for thy faithful witness, Jonathan Merrick Daniels, who in the midst of injustice and violence risked and gave his life for another. And we pray that following his example, we may make no peace with oppression. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the just one who with thee in the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the letter to the Galatians. But the scripture has imprisoned all things under the power of sin, so that what was promised through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Jonathan Merrick Daniels was born in 1939 in Keene, New Hampshire. He grew up there in the Congregational Church and from an early age expressed a desire to help people, perhaps as a doctor like his father, or in the military, or as a minister. As a teenager, Daniels joined the Episcopal Church and after high school he left Keene to attend college at the Virginia Military Institute in Virginia, where he was the valedictorian of his graduating class in 1961. He was also the winner of the Institute's Danforth Fellowship for Postgraduate Study and enrolled at Harvard University to study English Literature. While at VMI, Daniels had begun to question his faith, but while attending Harvard in the spring of 1962, he went to an Easter service at Church of the Advent in Boston. There Daniels felt a renewed conviction that he was being called to serve God. Soon after, he decided to pursue ordination and was admitted to the Episcopal Theological School in Cambridge for the term beginning in the fall of 1963. In March of 1965, Daniels and some of his fellow seminarians answered Martin Luther King's invitation for young people to come to Selma, Alabama to participate in a march for voting rights for African Americans. Though intending to be in Alabama for only a weekend after missing his bus home, Daniels and a colleague, Judith Upham, decided they wanted to stay longer and got permission from the seminary to spend the rest of the summer in Selma and study remotely. 
While in Selma, Daniels attempted to integrate a local Episcopal church, though his efforts were not welcomed by the congregation there. Daniels returned to school in May for his final exams and then went back to Alabama in July of 1965. On August 14th of that year, Daniels was one of a group of protesters, including members from the Student Non-Violating Coordinating Committee who had been invited to go to Fort Deposit, Alabama to picket its white-only stores. The group was arrested and taken to the local jail in nearby Hainville in a dirty garbage truck. They were held for six days in cramped and unhygienic conditions, the authorities refusing to accept bail for any of them. On August 20th, the group was released. Daniels, along with Richard Morrisrow, a Catholic priest, and two teenage black activists, Joyce Bailey and Ruby Sales, walked to a nearby store called the Cash Store to buy a soda. Before they could enter, a man named Tom Coleman, a county highway engineer and volunteer deputy sheriff, ordered the group to leave and leveled a shotgun at Ruby Sales. Daniels pushed the young woman aside and was shot in the chest by Coleman. Daniels died instantly. A second shot wounded Morrisrow. Despite having occurred in a county where 80% of residents were African American and where the event happened in front of multiple witnesses, Coleman was acquitted of all charges by an all-white male jury. In an interview in CBS later, a year later, he said he had no regrets, further stating, I would shoot them both tomorrow. Coleman never faced any justice for his acts, and he died in 1997. Ruby Sales, the young woman whose life Daniel saved, was traumatized by the murder, struggling to speak for several months afterwards. She was determined, though, to testify at the trial of Coleman and did so. She continued to work for civil rights for black citizens and also received degrees from Princeton and the Episcopal Divinity School along the way. She continues this day to work for justice for her fellow African Americans. She is the founder of the Spirit House Project in Atlanta, and you can follow her insights on Facebook. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. And let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see. A light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.